What's up insiders? Welcome to the first episode of Dimitri Reports. This is your weekly updates on the all spicy stories in the roofing industry. We have never done this format before, so it's extremely important that you share your feedback. If you like this news, please give it a like, subscribe and comment. If we get at least 200 likes, we're gonna do it again next Sunday. We have literally a team of seven people preparing this news for you this coming Sunday. And we like to produce the content, but your feedback matters to us because if you like it, we're gonna produce more of it. So 200 likes, and we're gonna keep doing it every single Sunday. Badger's Corner. First up is Badger's Corner. Many of you know Steve Badger. He is a very smart insurance lawyer with a lot of hot takes. He has been on Roofing Inside channel a few times before. Most famous piece is his debate with a Chad Wilson lawyer. This week, Steve Badger have made a post on LinkedIn about roofers are killing their golden goose, meaning their insurance payouts. He shared an article about a law in Florida that requires insurance companies to pay for matching undamaged areas of a home with the damaged area that needs to be repaired if it's necessary. So for example, they might have to pay to replace entire roof if you can't find a matching tiles to repair it, it's just in one spot. Now, the insurance companies say that contractors are abusing this law and inflating claims to get more money. Steve Badger says they have no choice but to change their policies to limit matching claims. If you're a roofing contractor, this is your opportunity to answer Steve Badger. He publishes something every single week, so he's probably gonna be making a lot in our news if we're gonna keep continuing those. So please comment below what you think about Golden Goose Story. I read all of my comments and I'm pretty sure Steve Badger will read it as well. That was dumb. Our next category today, we have a funny news or a segment I'm calling That Was Dumb. Here's the video of some guys using a ladder 60 feet in the air. It's actually two ladders zip tied together. Not very smart. Take a look. I guess desperate times means desperate measures, but look at this 60 feet. What do you think would happen if this guy would fall down or if those zip ties would go down? Would you do it? It's definitely not OSHA certified, those zip ties and stuff. I personally would need at least a million dollars to do this job. Comment below how much you would climb it and how much you would like to get paid if you have to do something like that. Also this week, we have Tim Brown making it to our segment in the news from Hook Agency. He has spent 24 hours on his roof. Luckily, he had a roofer help him out and give him some protective gear. He also recorded two podcasts while on the roof and ate some questionable food with no bathroom. I'm about to spend 24 hours on a roof. We got out of here when it was dark at 7 a.m. It's like under 40 degrees this morning and it's gonna be under 40 degrees tonight. Is there any way you can get it, get it to me? Hey, who's in charge here? Who's the supervisor? I've never done a 3 a.m. podcast before. We'll see how it goes. I personally think that Tim Brown watched too much of Mr. Beast content. 24 hours on the roof for no reason. It's not something I would do, but I guess Tim Brown wanted to get some attention and awareness to roofing. He's obviously a marketer who markets to roofing contractors. I like the video, very, very creative, but did anybody notice that he has a three tap shingles? He, Tim Brown actually needs his roof as well. So comment below what you think behind the reasoning of him doing it. I personally think it was a dumb idea. I would never done it myself. Not hating on Tim, but I told him he, uh, reached out and said, Dimitri, I'm doing this. Would you react to it? Said, absolutely. But when I'm going to react to it, the title of that video will be my dumb friend spent 24 hours on the roof. Tim Brown, nothing but love here from Roofing Insights to Hook Agency. Thank you for this piece of content. Guys, comment below what you think about the story. Manufacturers and materials. 
Moving on to something more serious. We have manufacturers and material news. The biggest story this week is Van Baxel. We have interviewed Kyle Van Baxel a couple weeks ago about how they sell roofing materials in a seconds market. Basically, what they are doing is selling shingles and ice and water shield as well as synthetic foul paper at a much lower price. We're talking about up to 90% discount in some cases. The materials are marked seconds for small defects like color difference or length differences or for that reason they don't have the manufacturer's name on them. This business model is a huge disruptor to the traditional manufacturing and suppliers market. As a roofer you can save a ton of money and this is not what the manufacturers want. They want you to buy their shingles and all of their accessories so you are covered under their warranty. The seconds market is going against all of that and is blowing up. I recommend you guys go and check out full Van Baxel interview if you haven't already and let us know what you think in the comments under that video. Kyle, the founder of Van Baxel, does need support. He's already have someone suing him. Honestly, guys like him, myself, who's also selling synthetic underlayments, have huge target on our backs. We have very few companies who sell directly to roofers. One of them is the Roof Store, also our partner of Roofing Insights. You can go to Roof Store, I'm gonna put link below and order underlayments as cheap as $38 per roll for synthetics. Unheard of pricing, but the accusations are is that big suppliers are just too greedy and increasing their prices for no reasons. Comment below what you think about that situation and don't forget to check the interview with the Kyle Baxell. Fines, scams and jail time. The last category we have this week is fines, scams and jail time. An honest A roofing franchise in Jacksonville, Florida laid off dozens of their workers a few weeks ago. News 4 Jacks reported that former employees say they are still owed paychecks and they had to abandon open projects. One homeowner says he already paid $56,000 to the honest ape, but the leaks on his roof hasn't been fixed. And now a supplier has taken out a $17,000 lien on his home because honest Abe didn't pay them for the roofing materials. The homeowner is now responsible for a $17,000 lien that was placed on his home. Honest Abe Roofing was supposed to replace my roof and change a few of the flashing along the edges of the roof. And how much have you paid them? It was 56,000 and change. Honest Abe didn't pay the supply company. So now the supply company has put a lien on my home. We visited the Jacksonville office again today, but no one is inside. So what can customers do if they've paid the company that seems to have stopped operations? So great question. What customers can do in the situations like that? So far, there's only one player on the market who covers this kind of scenarios, and that is directory.com. It's the only company who will cover theft, liens from the manufacturers up to $20,000. This customer, if he would find a contractor on directory.com, and directory does offer quite a few contractors, roofers in Tampa area. If he would find a contract there and they would go out of business, directory would pay out the check like they've done before in the past, directly to the homeowner and figure out what happened to Honest Abe on the back end. It's very hard to join directory.com for the contractors because they have to have good financial stability to join, pass background check and few others. And so far, that's the only answer in the marketplace. I would suggest they do a couple of things. Uh, one is file a state uh, complaint with state attorney's office because that can eventually elevate to fraud. Uh, and then they also, should, if they have access to a lawyer, they should probably file suit uh, against him for the money. Great advice, Better Business Bureau. Unfortunately, what are you gonna do about it? Better Business Bureau every year says, well, do this, do that. Listen, even if you go after the company, if you hire lawyers, you're gonna spend more money, lose more money. I don't take advice from Better Business Bureau, the company who are uh, once upon a time accredited Hamas, the terroristic organization. We have a great reminder this week what that organization is and BBB is pay to play. Unfortunately, that does not answer 
to the problems. They only take money, hundreds of million dollars every year, and all they can do is give BS advice like this one. Up next, we have reports of a classic roofing scam going on in California. San Mateo County District Attorney says that the scammers have been targeting elderly people in the Bay Area. They are going door to door, driving in cars with fake roofing service decals and offering to do free inspections. Then they damage the roof and demand to be paid for repairs. We had a story just like this a few months ago in Minnesota. Guys like this give roofers a bad name. Last story this week, a homeowner in Oklahoma City says she paid for a new roof four months ago. And not only has no work have been done, the roof is actually worse than before. She paid ground up constructions company to do the work. The owner is Cecil Baker. He claims that all the materials and the money were stolen. Tariva Talley says she's run out of options. She's lived in her northeast Oklahoma City home almost her entire life. So when it was time for a new roof, she called Ground Up Construction Company. Ground Up Construction, certified heating and air conditioning. Who gave them the roofing license? Who gave them the right to work on the roofs? No wonder the roof is such a mess. Ellie says the owner, Cecil Baker, first came to her house in June to start the job. That month soon turned to months of false hope and excuses. He was telling me how the roof, uh, the, the material for the roof got stolen. Then it went from that to the money was stolen. Tally says the request for repairs have led nowhere. And every time it rains, there's more water leaking inside her home. I wonder how much she paid. Since the new story does not say the dollar amount, it's probably very small. If I have to guess, contractor did not charge enough. It's probably a couple thousand dollars on $15,000 roof because just judging by this, this is 10 to $20,000 project. I doubt that that's how much money was paid and exchanged. Again, I'm speculating here. Comment below what you think about this one. Uh, it's clearly visible that house is in distress. They have way more problems than just the roof, interior, exterior damage, very old house. Nevertheless, contractor should not take the job if he cannot perform the job and should not be hiding from reporters and homeowners when he did so. That's all I have for you for this week. As far as news goes, if you want Dmitry Lipinski to bring you a roofing industry related news next week, this video has to get at least 200 likes. So give it a like. It'll send me a signal that you liked it and we will cover the news for the next seven days. Either way, regardless, we'll see you in the next video.